We spent some time on this show looking into the very tough spot many female athletes find themselves in. Increasingly, they find themselves forced to compete at a great disadvantage with biological men. You were in a race, two biological males were allowed to compete, and you didn't make it by two slots. Is that correct? Yes, it is. I came eighth place, and the top six qualify for the regional New England meet. And if those two athletes weren't competing, then I would have been the sixth girl, and I would have moved on and advanced. The girl you just saw has, along with two other women, sued for the right to compete in women's sports against other biological women. But they are amazingly fighting an uphill battle. The judge in that case, Robert Chatney, has banned the girl's attorneys from describing biologically male athletes trying to compete in women's sports as males. He's also refused to recuse himself because he just doesn't care. Here's another problem. A Supreme Court decision last week written by Justice Neil Gorsuch massively expanded the scope of federal law regulating transgender issues. So the question is, and it's particularly acute if you have daughters, is will women's sports exist? Christian Wagoner is the general counsel and senior VP of the U.S. Legal Division for Alliance Defending Freedom, and we're happy to have her on tonight. Kristen, thanks for coming on. So what does this mean exactly? Well, our clients have lost opportunities, podium spots, medals, and other types of opportunities because the Connecticut schools have allowed two male athletes to take 15 different state championships away from nine girls. So you're right that we're deeply concerned about this and concerned that the law reflects reality, that biology matters, and recognizing that is not bigotry. And girls matter. I mean, that's what we're told. Girls matter, women matter, their voices matter, their experience matters, their achievements matter. I mean, that's beaten into our heads. And by the way, I agree with it. But now we're told, shut up, they don't matter at all. What is going on? Well, we have been told that by some, but that's why we're fighting this case, is again to recognize that biology matters and that the law should reflect biological distinctions. As an athlete myself who played in college and a daughter who I anticipate well, I agree it very much matters because we know that, first of all, science and common sense tells us that men, boys who reach puberty, no matter what kind of hormones or testosterone suppressants they have, they'll, girls will never be able to compete at that level. An interesting fact that I read just today was that 275 high school boys are able to score a faster time against the best female Olympic sprinter. So we know that these differences matter and that girls deserve an equal playing field. So it, it, it's interesting. It's not just that biological men are competing against women. It's that they're winning. And that's really the most unfair part of it. They are sna and, and winning on a wide scale, correct? This is not a, you know, something that's happened three times. You're absolutely right. It is happening in different, all kinds of different segments of our society. But I would say the low-hanging fruit right now for activists on the left is the athletic field. And we need to make sure that we protect that field, not only for the benefits that uh, athletes can have through scholarships and advancements and opportunities, but also just what being able to compete produces. 96% of all women CEOs were athletes. Um, yeah. th this type of competition is good. And if we want to have true diversity in our society, we should recognize that in terms well, of, of recognizing the differences between men and women. Those are good things. It's, it's a inherently healthy to be outside competing athletically. It's better than being on Snapchat, even. I mean, I don't want to blow your mind or anything. <laughs> so obviously, the, having spent a lot of time around female athletes myself, I know that girls are into it. I mean, they're into it. And if you take away their opportunities, if you cheat them out of their victories, it hurts them. Is anyone listening to them, to their voices in this? They are listening to them, and we've been excited about some of the opportunities that have developed. At first, uh, these girls were three lone girls standing alone. Their co-teammates felt the same way but didn't have the courage to speak. Others have said, I agree, but I don't have the courage to speak. But thankfully, in this particular case, the Department of Justice has come in and filed briefs um, on their behalf. We've had the Department of Education issue findings in their favor. We even have radical feminists and lesbians yes. who are speaking out on their behalf, including J.K. Rowling, who came out in the last couple of weeks and said, I know I'm going to take hits for this, but you know what? This is about being a woman, and no matter how any man 
man feels, that man is not a woman, and certainly not when it comes to issues of safety, of privacy, and of female competition. That's exactly right. If progress means crushing little girls, it's not progress, actually. It's bullying. It's cruelty. It's disgusting. And no society can ignore nature forever. Sorry, can't. Kristen, thanks so much right. for your bravery. I, I know you take a lot of abuse for it. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate yours as well, Tucker. Thank you.